This was inevitable. All roads lead to Jacques. It's not as complicated as it looks. It's purely a question of technique. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Jamie and Chef. And it's always a very special episode when we throw a wrench into this thing, switch up the cookbook. So, Fanny Farmer, it was fun. I'll see you again one day, but it's time to move on. To the master, Jacques Pepin. If you're not familiar with him, don't you worry, because, well, I'm only figuring it out. Let's do this together. In your early days, Jacques, you were a French chef, and at one point, the private chef to the president of France. Then what'd you do? You moved to the States and were cooking in the French restaurant here in New York. This was during the 60s. And that had you skyrocketing through a career in food. And then in the 70s, you were in a fairly serious car accident. You struck a deer and your car went into the ravine. Once you were in that accident, you injured yourself pretty severely. You had to pivot, right? You had to figure out what was next. And that led to even more success, right? Because you became like a culinary cooking educator with cookbooks and TV shows. You even had a show with our gal, Jules, Julia, child, called Cooking at Home. I'm talking to you and him. We're talking all together here. It's a group of us. So in the past month or two, I've started watching old episodes of his various shows, and I've never seen someone with such a deep understanding of food and cooking just sitting there watching, I'm like, he doesn't stop moving, he doesn't stop talking and describing so expertly what he's doing. I only knew of you, uh, like as just like a name prior to all of this, and now I kind of have a man crush. This isn't the biography channel, so I will uh, move on to the next part. <laughs> what I have here is the Essential Pepin Cookbook. It's kind of like, uh, Kind of like uh, how Julia Child has the Way to Cook cookbook, which is like her magnum opus. Kind of the same thing. More than 700 all-time favorite recipes from my life in food. Enclosed with a DVD. And best of all, cover of the book is padded. Kind of reminds me of uh, the padded toilet seats at Grandma's. You know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna make one of his classics. The chicken ballotine, which is a whole chicken that has been boned and stuffed. And I'm gonna make the uh, spinach, cheese, and bread stuffing. I've done something similar to this on Jamie and Julia with the turkey. I consider that like my basic training. Let's get to work. The chicken, four pounds. And time to get your hands dirty. We gotta debone this thing. So he says, get yourself a sharp paring knife and cut off the tips and the second joint of each chicken wing. Okay, there's our skin suit. Why did I do that? Why did I remove the meat from the skin? I was only supposed to remove the bones. Why did I do that? Bobby. Step aside, chicken. Make room for that chicken. That's okay. I eat chicken all the damn time. This will not go wasted, but I wanted to do it right today. So that's what happens when you zone out doing something halfway through doing it. Mistakes happen. You forget what you're doing. And pardon the interruption, I'm gonna thank this episode's sponsor, Made In. Made In designs professional quality products for the home cook. Their kitchenware is used in three Michelin star restaurants like Le Bernardine, a fancy French restaurant, just like a hop, skip, and a jump that away. They're also used here. 
Made in stainless clad pans are crafted in Italy with their premium five ply stainless steel material, which is what sets it apart from other pans out there. The five layers allows for superior heat retention, even heating and ease of heat control. I use the stainless steel collection often. I got the frying pans, the <coughs> skillet, and a shout out to my baby, the versatile saucier. <coughs> this has quickly become one of my favorite pans to use can do it all. And I find the 10 inch frying pan ideal for a lot of my cooking. Come over here. The handles of this collection are designed to stay cool on the stove top and ergonomic to help balance the pan. And the curvature of the walls are designed for deeper searing and easy flipping. While a rolled rim allows you to pour sauces without spilling. Check out Made in Stainless Steel Collection as well as their other cookware and use the link in my description to save on your order. Thank you Maiden and let's get back to it. This is what I was trying to explain about half an hour ago before I started this whole process. JP has a detailed description on how to bone a chicken in this book. Debone a chicken, whatever you want to say. Uh, there's also a fantastic video on the exact same website you're watching me. Jacques Pepin has a great video deboning a chicken. Uh, I'm gonna follow both this time, just so I don't forget. The wishbone is that triangle right in the middle here. Okay, so first things first, cut off the tips and the second joint of each chicken wing. Lift up the skin at the neck, and then I gotta remove the wishbone. Cut around it, pry the bone out with your thumb and your forefinger. There it is. Wishbone. The bird on its side and cut from the neck down to the tail. With the chicken still on its side, lift the skin up at the shoulder joint. When you move the wing and the skin, you will see the joint there. And I cut through. I do have a Band-Aid on, that is from the first attempt. Cut my finger. Okay, so once that joint is separated, I gotta also cut the other side of the joint at the shoulder. Oh, there, right there. With the joint of the shoulder cut, let's go to the other side and do the same thing. Grab the whole wing and you pry until you see the little oyster. There it is, oyster. Same with the other side. Two fingers on each side of the breastbone and pull down. Releasing the white meat from the sternum or like the breast bone here. The meat is now completely freed from the top and held only at the leg joints. Okay, with the leg, there's a little oyster here, a little oyster of meat. Remove that from the bone. Same with the other side. Take the dark meat and crack it open. Hey! Why are you out of breath? He says to cut some sinew to pull it out. Oh, the sinew there. I see. There's got to be sinew on both sides, right? Yeah. And then he says to pull the whole damn thing out. It should be pretty simple once you've separated the joints, the sinew, etc., etc., and you just pull. There's the carcass. Hey, he says this shouldn't take long, and it didn't. He says under a minute. Well, times that by like four or five. But it's done. All the meat that's left on these bones here should be these two little white meat fillets. Slide your thumb or finger underneath and pull each one of these off. There you go. He says there's a little sinewy action here on these little pieces of white meat, and you just take your knife and you scrape it off. And we are sinew free, rest of it over here. To remove the bone from the leg, we have to cut around. Okay, so with the thigh bone here, I just scrape my knife down, removing the meat from the bone. Now that you've revealed the, the like thigh bone, we gotta find the knee and scrape around the knee now. And then we'll scrape down the drumstick as well. Reverse the skin. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. What is going on with this body? I can't find the other part of this. Flip it inside out. What? Okay, well, I'm so confused. Where does that start and end? Like, where's the outside? There it is. Okay, so follow that. That's what I was looking for, right there. This piece here needs to stay on the skin or the skin will shrink. So I have to break it off from the inside here, right at the tip with the back of my knife. Judo chop. See, okay, let's do the same with the other side. 
I got the knee and cut your finger for the second time. Ah, that hurt. If you don't have rubbing alcohol and you cut your finger, vinegar and water. This is gonna sting. The second time was a little deeper than the first time. It's okay, don't need to be rushed to the hospital or anything like that, but this is serious business. I know, it's a white glove, I'm a YouTuber, it should be black. We're gonna have to make an exception for today. This glove has given me the grip I didn't have before. Just at the tip of that bone with the back of the knife. To remove the wing bones, cut around the joint and pull out each bone. Scraped all the meat off the wing bone. I should just be able to yank it out. We have a deboned chicken in the kitchen. Off to my right here, I have a loaf of bread on a silver platter. This is just like, as they call a country loaf. Just a loaf of white bread. So I just need half inch cubes. Lovely. What is that, like one and a half cups worth? Give or take. Finally chop up a garlic clove and one complimentary courtesy chop. Bowl and colander meat. Perfect. Sue. Julia, is that you? Julia Child! Five ounces of baby spinach. Don't worry, I'm gonna wash it and I'll meet you over at the stove. In my skillet. Add in a tablespoon of olive oil and heat it up. In goes the garlic, quarter teaspoon of salt, couple hoots of pepper. Soften the garlic one minute. Add the spinach and keep it in there until it's wilted. Could I have that bowl back? Thank you. With the sieve? Thank you. There's too much water in that pan from when I rinse the spinach. I don't want that in the stuffing. Be gone. Transfer to a bowl and let it cool to room temperature. Reserve the cheese and bread. Continue with the recipe. Chicken back over here. The little fillets of white meat can just kind of, you know, glue those back together. The dark oyster meat can just go right there. Sprinkle with salt, about a quarter teaspoon worth or whatever the hell that is, a little more. And pepper, what is it? Quarter teaspoon worth, a hoot. Spread the spinach mix on top. And then the grated Gruyere cheese, cup worth. Hell yeah, all of it, right? Yeah, and then just the bread cubes on top as well. Make sure it's all even. Oven's been preheated to 400 degrees F and this is all the kitchen twine I have. So yeah, I'm gonna have to make it work. That should be enough. Make sure that if there's any like areas where you can stuff the stuffing in, like in the legs. Yeah, roll the sucker back up. So the sides first, come on, easy does it. And then the skin of the neck as well, over. There's, get that in there. Okay, this isn't as easy as you were making it look. Jacques, because uh, I got a bit of a skin situation here. He just says roll it up. It's easier said than done. It's not as perfect as Jacques, so I can't really flip it over onto its seam uh, as much as I want to. So let's just be careful when we're tying the sucker up at the twine, first with the, the pieces of the leg, tie those in place. Okay, so he loops the string around and he slides it underneath and he tightens it. How did I do that? gonna get more challenging as we go along here. In half inch spaces, I just tie it. it. Takes that and you loop it, but that goes under. Yeah, and then you slide it underneath. 
Come on, hold steady, you bastard. The next skin plays a very important role here because it's gonna lock the rest of that stuffing in place. Uh, so let's do the loop, loop-de-loop, -loop, and then under, and then we tighten. Okay, I think that's secure. Take the string, go lengthwise, head to tail. Tightly. A, where the strings meet, just kind of loop it around to lock it in place. Okay, and then we gotta knot it. Oh, that's holding steady. That's a tight little chicken parcel right there. Nice 12 inch frying pan as my roasting pan today. Chicken goes into the pan. So JP says nothing about greasing up the, uh, the pan. I did a little bit, but don't tell him. He says nothing about like buttering up or oil on the outside of the bird for like maximum browning. So I'm just gonna trust him because it's his recipe, not moi's. And he says nothing about basting. So I'll just, I won't, unless I want to. Well, we'll see how it goes. This goes into the oven, just like so, for one hour at 400 degrees F. From the two chickens I used today, I have a lot of leftover bones. I'm gonna save these for a stock. I hope so. I always just say I'm gonna make it and then I forget about the bones in the freezer until like six months later. It happens. Halfway through cooking this, I'm gonna rotate the pan in the oven. My call. So I'm gonna dice up a stock of celery, chop up like half a cup of onion, and one third cup of carrots. Coming in hot. Nice. Grab it. Jacques just kind of did this and it came off the pan. I'm hoping for the same. Perfect. Bowl me. Thank you. And this. Most of the cooking fat and the drippings and all, all that jazz. Get that out of there. Over there. Heat is on. Okay, so we're gonna make our sauce. We got deglaze. In the pan, I'm gonna add one third cup of water and half a cup of wine, a full bodied. This is a Chianti, it's whatever I had left over. All the beautiful fawn, scrape it up over medium heat. So, saucepan, sieve, and let's strain all this good stuff into the pan. In go the vegetables. Bring it to a boil. Now Jacques prefers to thicken a sauce with potato starch rather than cornstarch, which is something I've never done before. He says to finish a sauce, it gives a bit of viscosity when you're using the pure starch like potato. To thicken a sauce with cornstarch tends to make it gooey and gelatinous. Those are fighting words against Julia there. Okay, so in around one tablespoon of water, add in half a teaspoon of potato starch. Yep. In goes the dissolved potato starch, as well as around a tablespoon of soy sauce to darken the whole thing. Stir, and then bring it back to a boil to thicken it. Uh, let me just, those cooking juices might work well in that sauce, good idea. Gently remove the string from my ballotine. If you were serving this sucker cold, it would be a galantine. Now Jacques says also that I can cut the nubs off the feet now so I need a few slices an inch thick and then I keep the rest whole. Oh yeah. So half of that goes onto the platter and then we kind of make these look like that. So I'm gonna do what Jacques did with the sauce on top of the end piece and then around all of this. And a little fresh chopped parsley on top to finish the dish. Order up! All right, jockey boy, let's see what this is all about. Jacques, you came out swinging. Safe to say, I adored that. I would say that the outside of it with the uh, skin, nice and crispy, 
The inside, juicy, tender, nice balance. That stuffing with the garlic flavored spinach. And then there's like the Gruyere cheese melted in with those freaking breadcrumbs. Addicting. As dynamite as that all was, and it does remind me a bit of a childhood favorite, Chicken Kiev. You ever had that? I feel like the sauce could, there's room for improvement with the sauce. First of all, it needed to be seasoned. It wasn't in the book, so I just kind of slipped my mind, honestly. And then the vegetables, they were too firm. It's funny, because I was watching Jacques make this on a show and he mentioned the same thing about the vegetables. They needed a little, little longer to cook. So that's good to know. Actually, other than that, there was no problems today. That's not entirely true because I have an entire full chicken in the fridge that has been manhandled. I'm gonna eat it. I cut my finger pretty badly too. Other than that, smooth. This was Jamie and Jacques. Bon appetit. Over. You know what? At the end of each one of his shows, he says happy cooking. See you later.